Friends, I am ready to get started with my Dutch oven cooking. I have my Dutch oven for my chicken and the bread Dutch oven is in the house, so that one I haven't brought out right yet. Right now, I'm going to get the charcoal started. So this is a, a charcoal chimney and I put some paper in the bottom and I did count out the briquettes that we would need plus a few extra. And so I'm just gonna get this started. going to take about 30 minutes for the charcoal to get up to temperature. Does anyone else hate these? So I have some paper in the bottom. That's going to get the charcoal going. Looks like I've got some flame in there now, so I'm gonna let it do its thing. And while that is getting started, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the Dutch oven. So this is my lid rack. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my pot prepared. I've got some onion slices that I've already sliced up and I sliced them kind of thick. These are kind of a barrier in the bottom of my pot between the heat and my chicken. They'll add some flavor to my chicken, but they're really there to keep the chicken off the bottom of the pot. So while the charcoal is doing its thing and getting to temperature, I'm gonna go ahead and get my chicken ready. wash the chicken in the house and I'm going to try not to get too chickeny. I actually want to go ahead and put some seasonings on the bottom of the chicken. Now I already mixed up all of my seasonings at home. I mixed them into a shaker jar so it was easier for me. And while I was in the house um, and I could wash my hands really easily, I went ahead and got some seasoning inside the chicken underneath the skin. Now this is one of our homegrown chickens. It weighs about six and a quarter pounds. Now I've got some fresh rosemary that I dried from my garden. And I have a fresh lemon. Now I use lemon juice as well at home. Um, I just thought to be fancy I would uh, buy a lemon. I'll put the lid on this and this is ready so now we're just waiting for the charcoal I did forget I need to put the thermometer in you want it you want it in the chicken thigh which will be hard I think it's gonna be in the breast actually I can feel that that's not in the muscle going to be really hard to read that way but it fits with the lid on so that's the way it's going to have to go that charcoal is still not lit the way I want so I've been married to Philip for a, a little while I'm gonna help this thing out Thank you. 
I want this charcoal to be a nice charcoaly gray. Every briquette lit up nicely. So briquettes have a measurement of heat and you can count the briquettes to measure the temperature, which is what makes them ideal for Dutch oven cooking. Now, the part of Dutch oven cooking that I'm not good at is maintaining the temperature. So we're gonna get this first batch of briquettes on our Dutch oven, and then we're gonna start a second batch to maintain the temperature during cooking. This chicken weighs a little over six pounds, so it has to cook for an hour and a half. Now my father-in-law, Danny Murphy, he's very good at Dutch oven cooking, but he's been doing it for so long that he doesn't count his briquettes and measure his heat that way. He just heats up a bunch of briquettes and he cooks with it. I'm not good enough to do that. I need to rely on the counting the briquettes and maintaining the temperature. Now friends, while my charcoal is still getting to temperature, um, I'm going to show you a little, I want to show you the book that I'm using. So this is Dutch oven and cast iron cooking. And I am really, really good at cooking over an open fire. I um, can make pretty much anything I want to open an, over an open fire. Um, we camp for years that way and I'm very confident with that cooking. The Dutch oven, not so confident. So I have my book and mostly what I'm using in the book is the chart. So as I told you, each briquette has a measured temperature of heat and you add the number of briquettes based on the size of your Dutch oven and the temperature that you want to cook at. So this is a 12 inch Dutch oven and I want to cook at 375 degrees. So I need 28 coals, um, briquettes, for my recipe to maintain that temperature. Now I am going to have to add to it as it goes. Now I'm going to be honest, I'm not very good at the maintaining the temperature. So that's going to be the real test of how this goes this evening. Now to roast in a Dutch oven, I'm going to put half of the briquettes underneath, so 14 underneath and 14 on top. And that's going to even out the temperature between the two. And I'm going to add briquettes to it as it cooks. Now if I was, um, if I'm baking, which I'm going to be doing with the bread, I'm going to put two thirds on top and one third on bottom. Now the Dutch oven that I'm going to use for the bread is not this kind of a Dutch oven. This Dutch oven is called a camp style Dutch oven and it has legs on the bottom. The Dutch oven that I'm going to make the bread in is just a kitchen style Dutch oven. It doesn't have the legs underneath. Ideally, I would be doing um, both that way, but I don't have another one like that. And technically, I can put the bread Dutch oven right here on top and cook that way. I don't know if I'm brave enough to try that yet. Um, a really good Dutch oven cook can stack these three or four Dutch ovens high and can cook an entire stack of ovens with different foods in each one and they maintain the temperature by maintaining the number of briquettes. I'm nowhere near that level. So let's just take it slow. So I'm pretty happy with my briquettes the way they are. I really think they should be a little longer but I'm already late on my cook time and I'm so afraid I'm gonna be finishing this in the dark. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and start counting out my briquettes. I need 14 underneath and 14 on top. So to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna move this out of the way. So how are we doing here? So 
I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's 14. So they're under the Dutch oven. And now I'm going to put the others here on the top. A little over. I'm so used to watching Danny do this and he like keeps all this up. I'm a I'm very nervous. So let's hope this goes well. Now I'm going to go ahead and add more briquettes into the, the cooker because I want to go ahead and get them ready. Okay friends, so my timer just went off. It's going to be set for every 15 minutes the entire time I'm cooking. I need to turn the lid. Now that ensures that I don't have hot spots on my chicken. So I'm just going to slide my little lid lifter underneath and I'm just going to turn it a quarter turn. I'm not lifting the lid because I don't want to let the heat out. It's actually really nice and warm right here. Um, I can feel it and I could smell the chicken a little bit. Now, I'm not super confident, so I'm going to go ahead and add a few more briquettes because I want to be sure to maintain this temperature. Well, friends, the timer went off again. It's been 15 more minutes. I don't know if you can see, but there's steam coming out of the pot, so that's good. I can smell my chicken, that's even better. So it's time to give it a quarter turn. Right there, this is starting to get hot, note to self. I'm going to give it a few more briquettes. Alright, well we'll keep it going and see how it comes out. Alright, so my chicken has been on for 45 minutes. It's time to get my bread started. Now, I only have one Dutch oven with the legs on it. So I put some rocks here um, to kind of hold my Dutch oven up. Which I think is going to work perfectly. And this is a smaller pot. This is a smaller pot, so it um, doesn't need as many briquettes, but still quite a few. So we're gonna put 10 on the bottom. And that's a little bit more than 10, which maybe I shouldn't do. Just because I'm, I'm running out. Okay. So I put those there. And I set that Dutch oven there. And now I need to put 10 on the top. Now this doesn't have to cook as long. So I won't have to maintain this temperature. There. Now I'm going to go get my little shovel and I'm going to put some of those hot coals over here as well. So I've just got my little tool set from the fireplace. And I'm going to scoop up some of these hot coals and put them on here. Don't want anything to go to waste. I didn't really
really tell you earlier, I did put a piece of sheet metal underneath my Dutch ovens. Just makes it a lot easier. I can control the charcoal a little bit better. It's not going down into the gravel that I have here. So hopefully that's gonna help. Um, at home, Danny, my father-in-law, he has a metal platform that is up higher. So he doesn't have to be working down on the ground uh, like I am. Now this one is going to be a little bit trickier just because this Dutch oven is really a kitchen one. It's for using in the oven. It's not really designed for what I'm using it for. But I only have one. And since I don't use it enough, I really can't justify owning two. Um, because I'm not very good at it, I don't practice it very often. Um, but I really, really need to work on it and get better at it because it's it's uh, fun to be able to come out here and cook dinner like this. I would really like to learn how to stack them up and maintain the temperature that way, but that's gonna need a lot of practice. Another 15 minutes is up. It's time to give this a quarter turn. It smells good, but I'm nervous. We have about 15 more minutes, I think, on this, and then I can check it. Um, the bread I just started, so that's gonna take, you know, a little bit longer still. I do have my charcoal going. Fingers crossed we're eating dinner tonight. Well, the timer is gonna ring, and it's time to check the chicken. I'm so nervous. Let's hope it's done. Okay, here goes nothing. Let's check this chicken. Well, it looks pretty good. The legs are looking good. That's a good sign. And according to that, it's overcooked so I'd say that I maintained the temperature well according to that thermometer it's over 200 degrees which that's way over for a chicken last time I did this it was cooked under so I'll definitely take over let me go ahead and keep this warm and we'll check the bread the bread didn't need as much time now the heat wasn't as even because this lid is not really designed for what I'm doing with it. Whew, it's crispy on top. It's a little over on the top. Um, definitely has a hot spot on it, um, but I'm feeling pretty good about this. Yay! We're gonna have supper tonight. Philip should be back in from the field um, probably within the half hour. So now just to keep it warm. I'm calling this a win. It's not perfect, but it's the best I've ever done with Dutch oven cooking. So hooray for me. Well, friends, I'm losing my light, and thank goodness my dinner is cooked. I feel like this is a win. So I just wanted to remind you, if you enjoy our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and comment and like the videos that you see. Our hope is that someday the blog and YouTube could become a way for us to uh, be able to live full time on the homestead and so these simple things that you do by liking and subscribing is what makes that possible. Thank you so much friends for being a part of the Kowalski Mountain family. We sure appreciate you. See you later.